Good morning, faith community. It's fall. The first day of fall is just around the corner. When we started doing these services, it was spring. Somehow summer went through this whole time period and here we still are, right at the beginning of autumn. And yet, we're still meeting in this way. And it's my privilege to welcome you to the worship service of Faith Community Congregation in Fresno. I'm glad you've joined us virtually this morning. Now, it may be that we're getting close to the time when we won't be meeting like this any longer. It looks like we'll soon have opportunity possibly to move back into our own sanctuary and have our own fellowship there. And in the meantime, we're increasingly going to be having live services outside at Butler Church and I invite you to stay tuned because we'll let you know when to join us. We want to begin meeting weekly outside so long as the weather permits us to do so. But until that happens, I'll continue to invite you to worship with us in this format. I'm glad you've joined us. Let's bow for an invocation and then let's begin to worship together. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. It's a beautiful day. The beginning of fall is right here. And all summer long we've worshipped you in our homes because we haven't been able to be together in one place. We hope that day is soon coming when we shall be able to be together, but we're grateful to worship in this way. Bless our time together. May the Spirit of God be present. May the power of God be evident in what we say and what we do. And may your grace rest over each one of us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Sing along, and if you want to get your Bible and open it to Jeremiah chapter 5, then you'll be right where you need to be when we get there. Thanks for joining us. Let's worship our God.
Well, I'm sure most of us know about warning labels. I mean, there are warning labels and warnings of one kind or another on almost everything we buy. For example, you go to the drugstore, you pick up some prescription drugs or even something over the counter, and there will be warnings on it. In fact, with prescription drugs, they hand you a sheaf of papers, two, three, four pages long, giving you all of the warnings connected with taking that kind of a drug. And of course, all the food we buy has warnings on it. Some of the warnings say that we should use it before a certain date. It's best by such and such a date. Other warnings tell us that it has gluten in it or it's made with peanuts or something like that. And so there are warnings there that we're supposed to take, uh, uh, take attention to or pay attention to those warnings. And then, of course, there are the products we buy that have chemicals in them. And they have all sorts of warnings all over them. If you use bug spray or weed spray or ant killer or mouse uh, poison or something like that, there's all sorts of warnings telling you not to do this and don't let it be around children and things like that. Even plastic bags have warnings on them to keep them away from children. And then, of course, along the highway, there are always warning signs about different changes in the road that are ahead. And whenever we're driving and we see one of those orange signs, we know that there's road construction. And that means we're going to have to detour or we're going to have to slow down or something like that. There's all of those kinds of warnings. And then uh, on the dashboard of the car itself, there are warnings. Red lights that flicker and blink and brighten up to let us know how things are going and to tell us when we ought to be careful and when we ought to step aside and let the car be fixed and so on and so forth. And now, even in this political season, of course, there are all kind of warnings of a different type that come to us. If you vote for this person, then that bad thing will happen. But if you vote the other way, it'll be even worse. And so we get all those kinds of warnings. And if we don't listen, if we don't listen to the warning, then we will be in some sort of trouble. There will be some sort of difficulty. There will be some sort of penalty or some kind of price to pay. A story about a warning that I suppose I'll never forget happened about 10 years ago in Yosemite National Park. In the springtime, as any of you know who have been in Yosemite, when the snow melts, the waterfalls are spectacularly beautiful. And there are all kinds of trails that hike up to the tops of these waterfalls. So you can stand up at the top and almost look over the waterfall down to where the water plunges onto the rocks below. And there are warning signs there. There are many, many warning signs around those waterfalls telling people to stay off of the rocks because the rocks are slippery and the water rushes over the rocks, especially when the snow is melting and those rocks become just impossible to hold on to. They are just like standing on a sheet of ice. And it was about 10 years ago, I think, perhaps a little more, that three young people, I think they were in their 20s, they decided to take a trip up to Yosemite and do some hiking. They got there and they decided to hike up to the top of Vernal Falls, which is one of the beautiful waterfalls that are part of the valley in Yosemite and which make it such a spectacular place. I've hiked to the top of that falls myself, oh, at least three or four times in my lifetime. And it's a wonderful hike and it's a spectacular view from up there. But there are warning signs all the way along the trail and especially as you get closer to the falls, there are signs telling you to stay off of the rocks because the rocks are slippery and you could be swept over the falls and it would be almost certain death for you. And so these three young people went out for a hike, drove down from wherever they lived up in Northern California. I think it was Modesto or uh, Turlock or someplace like that. And they started hiking at the bottom of Vernal Falls and they went up the trail and they passed all of the warning signs. Those signs were all there. And they got to the top of the falls and they decided that they would take their shoes off because they'd been hiking, their feet were hot, they were dusty, they were a little tired. The water looked so cool and so refreshing. And the three of them waded out into the water at the top of Vernal Falls. And it felt good. It was cool, it was comforting, it was pleasant. And all of a sudden, the girl, there were two guys and a girl, all of a sudden the girl started slipping. And as she started slipping, sliding toward the edge of the falls, she realized there was nothing for her to hang on to. And there was a person standing there on the side who was interviewed later on by the newspaper or the television. And he said, and I have never forgotten his words, he said, as long as I live, I will remember the horror on her face 
as she started to slide. Because once she began to slip, the rest was inevitable. One of her male partners reached out and grabbed her hand to try to hold her back, and in grabbing her hand, he too began to slip and to slide with her toward the edge of the precipice over the falls. And the third person, another man, reached out, and he tried to grab too, and he too was caught. And the three of them swept over the falls, crushed to their death on the rock below. Two of the bodies were recovered almost immediately, but the third body, one of the young men, was not covered for months until the summer passed and the water level had dropped low enough so they could find his body wedged under one of the rocks. There were warning signs. There were lots of warning signs, but they chose not to listen and the price they paid was life itself. Later on, the parents of one of those young people came up to the National Park Service and said, why don't you erect a wall around the top of the falls? Why don't you put a solid barrier there that nobody can get over so that people will never have this happen to them again? And the National Park Service said, no, that would destroy the beauty of the place. We have the warning signs. People need to listen. Well, that's sort of what's happening in Jeremiah chapter 5. The chapter we want to look at this morning. Warning signs. Jeremiah is talking to the people of God and he's telling them God has posted all sorts of warning signs and if you don't listen to those warning signs there will be a terrible price to pay. That's the sermon that Jeremiah is asked to preach in Jeremiah chapter 5. A sermon of warning, a sermon that calls people to listen, a sermon that says these are God's priorities. And if you don't follow God's priorities, there will be an accounting. There will be a price to pay. There will be a judgment coming. And so if you have your Bible and you want to turn to Jeremiah chapter 5 with me, we'll look at Jeremiah chapter 5. There are three warnings that are given. And then a statement about Jeremiah about uh, of how things will be if these warning signs are not listened to. Now, Jeremiah chapter 5 is a long chapter, and so we're not going to read all of it together. I will just pick up bits and pieces as we go along, and you can read the whole chapter and fill in the details for yourself. Just recognize that I'm being faithful to the chapter, even though I am leaving out parts of what it has to say. So here are the warning signs that Jeremiah gives them. Warnings to a nation to keep them on the path on which God wants them to be. And the reason that I'm sharing these warning signs is because even though America is not a chosen nation in the way that Israel was a chosen nation, I think some of the warnings which God gives to people still have validity for us today. So here's the first warning sign. I call it warnings about what they've neglected. These are warnings about things that they didn't do. Let me read you a little bit of Jeremiah chapter 5. Here's what it says. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Look and take note. Search her squares to see if you can find a man who does justice and seeks truth, that I may pardon her. O Lord, do not your eyes look for truth? You have struck them down, but they felt no anguish. You have consumed them, but they refused to take correction. They have made their faces harder than rock. They have refused to repent. Whenever you and I are going on a trip, there are certain things we need to take along with us that are absolutely essential for the trip. If you're going camping, for example, you have to take your tent or your trailer, you have to take your cook stove, you have to take your food, and you can't get out on the campsite and say, oh, I forgot some of these things. Well, we'll camp anyway. It just doesn't work. If you're going skiing or up to play in the snow, you have to take along your boots. You have to take your earmuffs. You have to take your gloves or your mittens. You may have to take your tire chains. It doesn't do any good to go without these things. You can't do it. If you're going to travel by air, you need to take your passport or your driver's license. And you cannot get to the airport and say, oh, I left that home. Can you let me on anyway? 
it doesn't work. And so God says through Jeremiah, there are certain things you should have taken along with you and you didn't take them and they're essential for traveling together with me. The first one he says is they ignored justice. One of the things that comes through so clearly in the Bible is that God is concerned about what we would call perhaps the uh, forgotten people, people who are widows, people who are orphans, people who are poor, people who are immigrants. God cares for those. God cares for people. And if in the business of living, a country forgets about the poor and the weak and the widow and the orphan and the immigrant, then that country is ignoring, ignoring some of the warning signs that God has given to them. Not only is justice a priority of God, but so is truth. And when a country ignores truth, when things that were true are no longer true, when leaders say things that are known to be not true, when people believe that which is not true, then they're ignoring the warning signs. And God calls people to account for violating the truth. Deceptions, lies, half-truths, exaggerations. If a society lives by those things, there will be a day when accountability will come. And the third thing he says is they ignored correction. They didn't listen. When someone pointed out to them that you're missing truth, you're missing justice, you're ignoring these things, they just went on their way. They saw all the signs, but the water looked so inviting. Sure, the rocks were slippery, but we'll stand back. We'll stay on the edge. We won't venture in too far. So they went all the way in ignoring God's signs given to society. They ignored justice. They ignored truth. They ignored correction. But there's a second warning that Jeremiah gives to them. Not only did he warn them about what they had ignored, he warned them about what they had done. This is what he says, quoting God now. How can I pardon you? Your children have forsaken me and have sworn by those who are no gods. They have spoken falsely of the Lord and have said, He will do nothing. No disaster will come upon us, nor shall we see sword or famine. The second thing they did is they forgot, forgot God. They said, well, we can live the way we want. God won't do anything. Nothing's going to change. The world is as it is. God's not going to do anything different. We don't have to worry about God. And so they pretended that the rocks were not slippery. They told themselves, our feet will hold. We're solid. These are rocks. We can stand on them. They forgot how slippery the rocks were and how easily once you begin to slide, how easily it was to slide toward the edge and how you could not stop. They forgot that God maintains his rights. They forgot that you can't violate the values of God without there being a price. They forgot that you can't walk against the laws of God without God holding you to account. As the old adage often goes, you don't have to believe in the law of gravity. But if you jump out of a window, the law of gravity is going to take over whether you believe in it or not. So Jeremiah's first warning is, you've ignored justice and truth and correction. His second warning is, what you have done is to say you could forget about God. God doesn't care. God doesn't know. God doesn't matter. And they stood on the rocks and the water ran over their feet and it felt cool. After the hot, dusty climb of trudging up the mountain, their feet wanted nothing more than to stand in the water. Oh, the rocks were slippery, but yes, we'll be careful. We'll watch the edge. Jeremiah gives them a third warning. And this is a, warnings, a warning about what they had become. So the first warning was uh, about what they had uh, neglected. The second warning was about what they had done. 
and the third warning was about what they had become. Hear this, O foolish and senseless people, who have eyes but see not, who have ears but hear not. Do you not fear me? This people has a stubborn and a rebellious heart. My people have grown fat and sleek. They know no bounds in deeds of evil. They judge not with justice the cause of the fatherless. And they do not, they do not declare or defend the rights of the needy. Shall I not punish them for these things, declares the Lord. First, he challenges them, he warns them about things they've neglected. Secondly, he warns them about things they've done. And thirdly, he describes what they have become. And it's a terrible list of things. They are blind, they are deaf, they are fat, they are sleek. They have no boundaries on their evil. They don't care for the fatherless. They don't defend the rights of the needy. They are rebellious, deceitful, disrespectful, indulgent, without justice, oppressing each other. The strong lord it over the weak, and the weak have no one to defend them. And God warns them, if you have a society where the poor and the weak and the defenseless and those who cannot help themselves are not cared for. You are going against the way of God and the rocks are slippery and you can go over the edge. So there are the three warnings. The warning of what they've neglected, the warning of what they've done, the warning of who they have become. All these signs on the trail have warned them the rocks are slippery. When the water runs over them in the springtime, they're especially slippery. Watch out, you could go right over the edge. But finally the warnings end. And finally you have to make a decision for yourself as to what you will do. And that is where Jeremiah's sermon now comes, to the end of the warnings. And at the end of the warnings he says three or four things. Let me point them out to you. First, he says this. Therefore, a lion from the forest shall strike them down. A wolf from the desert shall devastate them. A leopard is watching their cities. Everyone who goes out of them shall be torn in pieces. The rocks are slippery, Jeremiah says. In this case, the rocks are like wild animals. They're like lions and like leopards and like wolves. But when those animals start coming, you can't resist, you can't fight, you can't keep them off. And so once you start to slip, you might grab onto the hand of your partner, but you're going to pull your partner to the edge along with you. Once the lion comes, once the wolf starts at your door, once the leopard begins to sneak up on your existence. The warnings have ended and now you are under attack. God is going to hold accountability. And though Jeremiah uses word pictures of animals to describe what's going to happen, the point of the whole, the point of the whole uh, statement is that God is going to act. The time for warnings is over now. We're now at the place where accountability takes in, kicks in. The second thing he says at the end is this, go up through her vine rows and destroy, but make not a full end, strip away her branches, for they are not the Lord's. The crops will begin to fail, he says. The vines will no longer bear the kind of grapes and the amount of grapes that they have in the past. Judgment is beginning. God is beginning to act. He is beginning to bring about that which he has promised. You're starting to slide. Your feet are heading closer to the edge. The precipice is just before you. And then this announcement. Behold, I am bringing against you a nation from afar, O house of Israel, declares the Lord. They are all mighty warriors. They shall eat up your harvest and your food 
They shall eat up your sons and your daughters. They shall eat up your flocks and your herds. They shall eat up your vines and your fig trees. You shall serve foreigners in a land that is not yours. It's too late. You're on the edge. There's no bush to grab onto. There's no rope that's being thrown to you. No, no life preserver that's being cast out your way. You're on the edge. You have neglected the warnings. You have forgotten to follow the signs. And now a nation will come and overthrow your country. When you and I are driving in our car and a red light comes on flashing on the dashboard, we have two choices. We can either pull over and stop and shut off the car and call for help or we can get out a hammer and smash the light on the dashboard. The Hebrews have done the latter time and time and time again. And now God says, you're going over the edge. You're going to land on the rocks below. A nation is coming and that nation is going to take you to your doom. Here are the last words of Jeremiah's sermon in chapter five. This is what he says. An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule at their direction. And my people love to have it so. But what will you do when the end comes? That's about as blunt as you can be. All of the warning signs have been posted on the trail. All the signs have told you that the rocks are slippery and you've ignored them all. And now you're standing on the edge. Your feet are sliding. There is nothing that can stop you. And the last that anyone sees who's standing nearby is the look of absolute horror and terror on your face as you drop over the edge of the falls into the abyss. It's a hard sermon from Jeremiah. It's a difficult, difficult passage. But it's a warning to nations that you can't neglect God's priorities. You can't neglect the poor and the widow and the orphan and the immigrant and those who suffer and those who are in pain. You can't neglect you can't let racism go on. You can't let hatred go on. You can't let division go on. Those are all warning signs that there's trouble ahead. And God calls us before our feet slip on the rocks and we go over the edge. There are two things I'd say in conclusion about this passage. First, God doesn't want to bring judgment. As we will see in the rest of the book of Jeremiah, there are several times where God says, I don't want this to happen. I don't want you to take this path. I don't want you to go this way. But you can't violate the laws of God. You can't work against the movement of God. You can't ignore what God is doing. God puts up as many signs as he can. But God leaves choices for us to make. And unfaithfulness to God, ignoring God's signs, will lead to God's judgment. The second and the last thing that I will say is that fundamental to the success of any society is attention to the things that are important to God. And according to Jeremiah chapter 5, what is important to God are things like justice, care for the poor, care for the weak, what we call in this country the safety net for those who need help. Greed needs to be restrained. Manipulation by the rich needs, needs to be held back. Those who glory in their power and how great our country is need to recognize how are we caring for those who are not cared for. These are warning signs. The rocks are slippery and nations that don't live by the priorities of God can go over the edge. 
in the midst of this season for us here in the United States. We need to be reminded again when we make our decisions about leadership, when we make our decisions about uh, where our country is going and even what our church and what we will do, how do we care for the poor, the weak, the widow, the orphan, the immigrant, those who cannot care for themselves. Failure to do that is to neglect the warning signs and it is to stand on the rocks that are slippery. And once you start to slide, there's nothing to hold on to. There's nothing to stop you. You go over the falls. So let's hear Jeremiah. Let's keep his warning signs in mind as we pray for and as we look at how we live in our nation today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining us this morning. You've been listening to, and actually you've been a part of, the Worship Service of Faith Community. This is September the 20th, and we're so glad to have had you join us. There are announcements coming about uh, ongoing services. We are going to begin having regular outdoor services until we can move back into our sanctuary. So stay tuned to our newsletter and other ways of communication. We'll let you know about that. But we'll continue to provide this service until we are able to live stream our service or to record it live and make it available to you later. We want all of you who are not able to worship here with us, to our, who are not able to be here present, we want you to be able to join us in worship from week to week, either through a live service, through a recorded service, or through a service prepared especially for online as this one is. However we do it, we look forward to continuing to come into your home whenever you can't join us in person. But we are going to be meeting in person more regularly from now on. So please stay tuned. We'll let you know. And now I'd like to pray a benediction on you before we go and say, see you next week, either in person 
or here in this way, whichever turns out to be the best and to be necessary. And in the meantime, keep reading the book of Jeremiah because it's a wonderful book that helps us to know what God's word is for our own nation today. Let me pray with you. Father, I want to ask you to bless every person that's listening to this story and to this service this morning. I pray that you will bless their life. I pray that you will encourage them. I pray that you will strengthen them. I pray that you will give them wisdom for whatever it is they're facing. If it's loneliness, I pray they will know that you stand beside them. If it's discouragement or depression, I pray that you will lift them up. If it's just the restlessness and the boredom of isolation, I pray that you will let them know you walk alongside until we are through this time. And may the day come quickly when we can see each other face to face and worship together in one place and encourage and stand with each other day after day after day. Bless each one, Lord, I pray. And may your grace, your peace, your love, and your hope be abundant on each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining us. It has been a privilege to have you as part of this service. And we'll let you know how to find us again, whether online or in person. So please join us whenever you can. May God bless you very, very richly. Amen.